This meeting is being recorded. Perfect. And so welcome everyone um, to this afternoon. We are excited to go over some of this work we, we personally have been working on for approximately a year and a half. And so we're excited to showcase this and, and really um, make sure everyone is aware of it across the region to try to take it home and expand the, the work and, and benefits that we've discovered. And so through this, the Dallas-Fort Worth Plain Cities Coalition, we conducted um, an uh, accessibility analysis of multifamily housing on um, public electric vehicle charging. And so Jonathan, um, his name, he goes by Cade. Um, he's our newest planner here on the team. He was just hired on full time last week. And so you'll see his name coming up more and more frequently as we're working on stuff. But he's been an intern with us for the last year and he helped us really, really get home on, and hit this home on um, finishing the analysis and getting some great work and products out. And so as some housekeeping before Cade takes it over, um, if everyone can go ahead and put their name and organization in the chat, that'd be really helpful for us to understand who is included in the conversation and how to make sure we keep you in contact. And so if everyone could just put that in the chat function, that'd be very helpful. And then in addition, if you have questions throughout the presentation, we will be taking question and answer at the end. And so feel free to write your questions in the chat as we're going through to make sure you're not forgetting it, but we'll go ahead and save all question um, and answers until the very last 10 minutes. And so with that, um, Oh, yeah, as well, please keep your microphone muted um, throughout the presentation, but feel free to unmute that during the question and answer session. And so with that, I will turn it on over to Cave to go through the presentation. And then um, we'll have City of Dallas and City of Denton give a brief overview of their um, participation within this project. And then we will have that question and answer. So, Cave. Awesome, thank you, Bailey. So hello, everyone. My name is Jonathan Cupid, as Bailey said, and it's good to present this to you guys today. So I present to you our analysis on identifying accessibility of multifamily housing to public electric vehicle charging. So just before we begin, I wanna give a bit of background within this. So of course we are the Dallas Fort Worth Clean Cities housed within the North Central Texas Council of Governments. One of our main jobs is looking at how to decrease ozone within the area as of course, much of our region is in a non-attainment status currently. And so we're always working on efforts to try and decrease that line over time. And through one of these efforts, we push the uh, adoption of electric vehicle, electric vehicles. And the reason we do this is because of course, there's no emissions produced by these vehicles. And so having a higher adoption rate will help it decrease ozone throughout the area. And of course, across the region and nationwide, EVs have been blowing up. As we all know, it's been, it's been a good couple of years for EVs. Of course, within the region itself, we have nearly 50,000 now. We're slowly getting there, but we've seen a lot of growth through the past year. And with on a national level, more and more manufacturers and uh, federal government is looking at how do we push EVs in order to attain energy independence and work towards and work towards our own infrastructure within our within our area, and exec, uh, such as uh, President Biden's executive order that aims for half of all vehicles to be sold to for them to be sold in 2030 be zero emission. All of these different efforts can help push us to be able to adopt these vehicles and make sure that we can achieve our, this energy independence and, of course, promote greener technologies. And so where does this put multifamily properties within this analysis? So right now with EV charging, one of the top barriers of adoption is simply, where do I charge my car? Of course, if you have a home, you can probably, you can just plug in within your garage, it's pretty easy, but it's not so simple for multifamily residents. So multifamily residents have a bunch of trouble with, okay, where do I charge my car? Where can I actually go to charge my car, be ready for tomorrow, be able to go to work, and right now, a lot of residents are relying on either their workplace or public charging. And of course, workplace charging is just you go to work, plug in your car while you work, take it out, go home. Public charging is um, just looking at where can I go publicly to charge my car, like a, uh, for the equivalent to a gas station. Where is, this is a problem is that the multifamily property residents do not have that same access that home chargers do. Some multifamily properties do offer charging throughout their apartment or throughout their complex, or maybe maybe at a parking spot, they have this uh, own electric vehicle charger, but it's still more seldom seen in most multifamily properties. So where local governments can come in through all this is looking at, okay, 
how can we increase the access for multifamily property charging? How do we ensure that residents are able to charge their car and get to where they need to go, whether it be through working with other multifamily property associations or individual prop multifamily properties, or even just building in more publicly uh, public charging station infrastructure throughout region. Okay. And of course, throughout all of this, with 18% of multi of um, residents in our region being in multifamily properties, it's a very significant portion of our population that that has lower access to charging. Okay. Don't forget to change the slides over. We're still seeing the, the title slide. Oh, um, I don't know why. I have been moving. Let me... Is anyone else just seeing the title slide or just my computer lagging? No, you're I correct. Can... We're only seeing the title slide, at least on my end. So maybe there just go is. ahead and, yeah, um, unshare and then reshare. Yeah. Okay. yeah, let me... Do y'all see the trend line now? No. No, okay. Um... So I'm gonna go ahead and share it from my screen. Yeah, I mean, unless y'all are y'all seeing the slide, uh, the trend line now. We're still seeing the title slide. <laughs> okay, yeah, it may be best if you. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll go ahead and share. <laughs> but technical right. difficulties. That's why we're looking uh, through all these I, slides and y'all can't even yeah, see. Yeah, I was that. like, oh, I think he, I think he's popping through them, but we're not seeing that. Okay, let me go ahead and share. Yeah. Has everyone seen that? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So next slide. Here we go. So um, everyone's still seeing the next and until that? Are you seeing presentation mode or are you seeing the actual slide? Uh, I, I'm seeing the actual slide now on the trend line, if that's where you're at. Okay. And, but you're not seeing the presentation mode. Okay. Like you're not seeing the next slide, um, like how my screen's showing, you're seeing the actual slide in the full screen? The actual slides, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, well, um, if you wanna take a little backstop and just give a brief, yeah. this is what you're talking about. <laughs> we could get yeah, just as a little fast run through, of course, that, that was a trend line I was talking about, working to decrease ozone within the area with non much of the region being in non-attainment. We are able to push electric vehicle technology as it does produce lower emissions, which of course, help to decrease ozone within the area. And then you can go to the next slide. And then of course, as I was saying, regionally and nationally EVs have been growing a lot with many of the EVs in our areas growing over time with a great, with a 32.5% growth rate, growth rate throughout the last five, last five to seven years. And of course, nationally, like I was saying, the executive order with, uh, with Joe Biden, it's all coming together to push EVs as a main technology. And then next slide. And then as I was saying, where multifamily properties come in is that lack of access where we're unable to, or excuse me, residents are unable to just go home and plug in their car like normal, uh, like, uh, like single family residents do. Instead, they have to rely on workplace charging or public charging. And where local governments are able to come in is by increasing access by either working with property associations, individual multifamily properties, or perhaps even just creating new public charging stations throughout their own region. And so that way they can increase that access for those residents within their area. The next slide. And so what this comes into is our analysis focus and what we are actually working on to be able to increase this access and see, okay, where do residents not have multi or excuse me, not have charging versus where they do have charging. And this has kind of come around in, um, and like Bailey was saying the last year and a half where we originally worked with the city of Dallas, but we also replicated it with the city of the city of Denton. And so through this analysis, we will work on accessing, assessing where residents have public charging versus where they don't have, have public charging, identifying possible equity gaps. So you're gonna see here later, different environmental justice, qualities of this analysis, and then finally working to actually present these findings to you know, whatever your local government may be uh, for, for the 
uh, case of city of Dallas and city of Denton was of course their city councils to help guide that future action and future investments. And then finally, in this final iteration of the analysis, we're actually trying to educate other cities and other jurisdictions. So that way you can replicate it yourself and see, okay, how could I replicate this analysis, but then tweak it to what I need it for. And then um, next slide. And so moving into the actual analysis, you're going to need some different types of data to actually get it going. So of course, to start off, you're going to need just simply multifamily properties. For these multifamily properties, we actually, the, the NCT COG has a data set on uh, different developments throughout the region. And within this data set are multifamily properties. So you can see here that on the right is how you can get that data set. And then this is actually the way you can filter that data set. So if you go into that filter tab shown on the right, click the subclass on the bottom near it, and then in that little list will pop up multifamily. And then you can go to that download option that has a little cloud. And then after that, you just simply toggle your filter and then choose whichever type of data set you need to download. So let's say you want a CSV file, shape file, maybe a KMZ file, whichever you need for your needs and possibly your GIS. Then next slide. And then of course, the other main component of this analysis is public electric vehicle charging stations. So you can see here that the, <coughs> excuse me, that there are, that we use the AFDC data center to typically download our um, public EV charging sites. So what you could do is you can go to this data center, go to, we usually use the advanced, advanced filter section that you can see there at the top. And then if you move down to actually choosing Texas, then you choose the type of fuel you want. You're able to choose electric stations and you can do differentiate by level two and DC fast. The reason we do level two and DC fast is to see, okay, which, which chargers charge more slowly versus at a much higher rate. So of course, DC fast are those typical that you are able to plug in your car and then charge for 30 minutes, maybe go to a shopping center or something like that. But what, Level two is for typically is for those at home chargers where you're able to plug in, you stay in plugged in all night, and then you're able to drive your car after say eight hours of charging or so. And so with these public stations, it's important to see, okay, where could say somebody park their car, leave it there overnight, maybe go to their multifamily property, sleep there, go back to their car, and then just drive to the drive to wherever they need to go versus where could they just go park, charge for 30 minutes and leave. And so within this, it's important to distinguish that level two and DC fast, that slower charging versus faster charging within this analysis. And you'll see kind of the examples later how we utilize this. Um, important to note for this is the different type of ports within public electric vehicle charging stations. So you can see on the right that within Texas at the time that I, uh, that we took this um, screenshot, there were 2,000 220 actual stations, but the number of ports were 5,341. So port is just simply how many chargers does it have? So you say you have your one station and then your two chargers on the side. So say for two different cars. And that's an important distinction that comes up much, uh, comes up later in the analysis, but I want to reference it here. Next slide. The next uh, part of the analysis that we want to consider was actually where are electric vehicles located? And so the way we did this was we were actually very fortunate because we purchased uh, DMV registration data from the Texas Department of Motor, Motor Vehicles. And the way that we use this data is through years of um, through years of iterations of trying to kind of trying to get it down to the most concise number of electric vehicle electric vehicles throughout our area. We actually use a VIN decoder, a, a VIN decoder. And we're able to see, okay, which cars that are registered are actually electric vehicle, electric vehicle, um, electric vehicles. And so with that, we used that data set and pulled it to be able to match multifamily properties within our area. And so what you, uh, your jurisdiction is able to do is either download the data as is, and you can attribute that onto electric vehicle or um, city of Dallas or whatever your city may be. So I just use the city of Dallas as an example, but you're able to use that to see, okay, where is the distribution of electric vehicles and where can, 
where is higher rates versus lower rates and where can adoption still be increased? So what, and what we have actually done is created our own tool that uses individual electric vehicles and is able to match them to multifamily properties. So if you want that level of granularity for analysis, you're actually able to come, uh, you can actually contact us to get that level of granularity rather than just dealing with the larger sized, um, you know, just across the region. So say zip code or city, you can go to that more granular level. Um, next slide. Um, it's black for me. I'm not sure if it's black for anyone else. There we go. Um, so for the next data that you would need is actually environmental justice slash equity data. And this is important because you're able to see where is where are chargers being placed and electric vehicles versus where they are not being placed. And you know, typically electric vehicles are a higher income type of purchase. So you see them at higher income, higher income multifamily properties. And what we wanted to do was make sure, okay, how do we increase the equability gap as electric vehicles become cheaper and as they become more widespread? How do we spread that out to across regions rather than those in higher income areas? So one of the ways we did this was actually utilizing the NCT COG North Texas environmental justice data set. And so we produced this in-house and it shows where within across the region where there is higher uh, proportions of low income, minority, and then both. And so what we did with that was actually we're able to see across the different cities where where this equity gap is being produced. Um, to mention, just as a quick kind of what if we could do this again right now, the um, Joint Office of of energy and transportation actually released what they call their Justice 40 map. And so within this Justice 40 map is a similar environmental justice equity lens, but it actually looks at nationwide rather than within our region. And so it tries to meet that Justice 40 criteria that was produced during the bipartisan infrastructure law. And so that's another thing that could or should be added onto this to further increase and understand that equity gap. Other than environmental justice, you're just going to need simple uh, census boundary data. So whether that be tracks, block groups, whichever you would prefer for that granular level, this would, this just helps to helps to uh, a later portion of the analysis to better visualize the results. And then finally, we also included different study area boundaries. So for the city of Dallas and the city of Denton, we actually included their districts. So that way, or the city council districts. So that way we could see Okay, across each city council district, how do they differ across across the entire area? Um, next slide. And then after you have all this data, you need to map your data. Next slide. So just as a kind of preliminary before the analysis starts, it's important to map your data and understand where everything is. So for this map, it is actually the multifamily properties within the city of Dallas. And then on top of that are the different types of charging stations. So you can see those level two, those DC fast chargers. And then we also included Tesla stations because Tesla stations are not actually public, actual public stations since you need a, you, since you need a Tesla vehicle to be able to charge there rather than at a level two or normal DC fast station. They're built for any type of electric vehicle. And of course, Teslas can do the you know, they can go from Tesla to uh, the, what, uh, the public charging site connectors that are there. And so it kind of creates a different lens about, okay, how do we see where is level two DC fast and Tesla's throughout the area and then kind of visualize how they interact with each other. Um, next slide. And then this slide shows how our, that EV registration and once again, those EV charging stations differ throughout the area in the city of Dallas. So you can see what we did was we joined that EV registration to those zip code boundaries to be able to see, okay, where is electric vehicle registration higher and where is it lower? So you can see like in the Northern area, it's more, there's more electric vehicles within those zip codes while versus the South of Dallas or the or South Dallas, it typically has lower EV registration. So you can kind of see how 
okay, how is this different across the region? And where is where are EV charging stations spread throughout and where do they match maybe? Um, next slide. And then finally, this is the environmental justice data set. So this one is once again, those EV charging sites on top shown as dots, and then the actual environmental justice NCT COG produced data set. So you could see in green are where block groups are above the regional percentage for low income and minority. While in the yellow, you can see it for just above the regional percentage of low income and then vice and then the same for minority in blue. And so this kind of paints a picture of, okay, where is environmental justice spread throughout an area? Where is EV charging stations matching? Where are they not matching? So you, for instance, in the in South Dallas, you can see more, more environmental justice areas with less actual EV charging, while in the north is less less environmental justice areas, but more EV charging compared to the south. Um, next slide. And then once you have all this data, it's time to actually analyze your data. So the way we did this was actually kind of breaking it up into two different analyses. So for one, we did proximity, which focused on, okay, I am in my multifamily property. How far do I need to drive slash walk to be able to get to a charger, go back, and then possibly come back and get my car? So it looks at where, how far is charging from charging from your actual multifamily property. In the second portion of this analysis, we focused on availability. So with this availability, we're looking at, okay, where are plugs within census, census block groups that maybe equate to the number of actual units in a multifamily property versus where they do not? So say for instance, there's a thousand units in one single census tract block group, but there's only one plug within that block group. You could say that, okay, all of these residents have access to electric vehicle charging. But in reality, say even just five people got a electric vehicle from those a thousand units, it would very quickly, quickly um, overrun that charger and so it would actually create less access for the ones that do have do have electric vehicles versus those that say have only 500 units and maybe 30 chargers or something. So something a little bit more can seem to be more um, fair and kind of with one another. But that's where we wanted to focus on was that proximity and availability. Um, next slide. So starting with the proximity analysis, the way it needs to actually be determined is first finding out what accessibility actually means for your community. So what we decided to do for the city of Dallas and the city of Denton was we used a half mile radius from um, multifamily properties to chargers. So we're able to see, okay, from this multifamily property within just a half mile as the crow flies, is there a, is there a, um, a public electric vehicle charging station. And the reason we did this was because based on our transit walkability parameters, parameters produced in other parts of the North Central Texas Council of Governments, this is usually the distance that people are willing to walk to say a bus stop. So we figured, okay, how do we equate that to multifamily properties and public charging. But that may be completely different for your community. Say maybe if there's someone's only willing to walk a tenth of a uh, or a tenth of a mile, yes. It creates a very different kind of lens to be able to look through that. Um, as well, you could do something like a more time-based approach to say, okay, is it a five minute drive from a multifamily property, five minute walk? What is the actual accessibility and how does that define your community? But once you have that value, you can start looking into how they interact with one another. So first you just need to start by setting your accessibility buffer and finding out, okay, once we have that, once we've buffered out those multifamily properties, you can then move on to identifying actual properties within those areas. So what all you need to do is identify those properties that intersect those buffers and see, okay, this, this and this property intersect this buffer. So therefore these are, these are considered more accessible than other, other multifamily properties. And then once you have that kind of lens, you're also able to see, okay, what if we add EJ on top of this, environmental justice on top of this, and see which of these properties have environmental justice areas 
and accessibility to charging stations versus those that do and do not. And so it creates a better, broader scope of how you can actually look at this proximity. And then um, next slide. So this is the results of that analysis and it's very, and there is a lot of to see in within this analysis. So just beginning on a kind of smaller scale within those first two points in the legend, the orange and the yellow, those are multifamily properties that both are within accessible charging, but one has EVs registered and one does not have EVs registered. So you can see which electric vehicle residents do have access to charging versus those that don't have EVs registered, but do have access to charging. So people could buy an electric vehicle. And then on the bottom are that blue and gray and the, they do not have any access to charging throughout uh, for that half mile buffer. And so where that differs is seeing, okay, within the blue, those are the multifamily properties that do have EVs registered, but don't have charging. And then the gray are, they don't have any EVs registered or accessible charging. So those blue darts are showing, okay, these are people that are currently potentially struggling to charge their car. And maybe they have to go out of their way to find different spots. While in the gray, if they ever got an electric vehicle, they would struggle to charge their car. And then underneath, you can see that EJ layer as well. And you can see how that kind of interacts. So say in the south once of Dallas, once again, you can kind of see, okay, people don't have access to charging and they do not have an electric vehicle registered, but there are pockets of different communities throughout there that paint a different picture throughout the entirety of Dallas. And then on the left, you can also see how that EJ is also interacting with these multifamily properties. So for other multifamily properties without nearby charging, it's only 54%. But if they're in EJ areas, that's 60, 67%, 67%. So it creates a greater, greater, less accessible community. Um, next slide. And then moving on to the availability analysis, this is actually looking at how you understand um, the number of units to an actual, or the number of plugs to the number of units. And so the way we did this, we, we created our own metric for those multifamily properties and environmental, excuse me, environmental charging stations. And so what we did with this is first, before I start it, um, within the data, you need to make sure that you use the number of plugs and units from those multifamily properties. Initially, we had struggles of, okay, we use the number of multifamily properties and the number of stations, but it's important to look at the number of units and the number of actual plugs to see what are the total of those in each region rather than just, just some of multifamily properties and some of the chargers. So once that is done, you first start by joining those plugs and units to whatever your census geography is, whether it be census tract or block group, and then you can sum that number and then move on to actually calculating out the number of plugs per units. So for this, we did plugs per units time 1,000. The reason we did 1,000 is since that number would be so small, it wouldn't make sense, but it is important to realize a thousand may not work for your community. We used a thousand for the city of Dallas for, and the city of Denton because they were generally bigger population areas. And so it made more sense for it, but maybe smaller metrics could make more sense, say 500, 100, whatever equates to your region best overall in comparison to say your population maybe. Af after that, we then moved on to actually utilizing those results and seeing how they were mapped throughout the region. And so um, you can go to the next slide, Bailey. And so that is the result of this analysis. So you can see, uh, this is the city, city of Dallas once again, on top of those multifamily properties, but then underneath, you can see the plugs per 1000 units. So in areas that are white, those are uh, census tracts that did not have any multifamily property. So it didn't make sense for that metric to even be equated, but on the, other scale from no plugs to greater than 15 plugs, you can see how, okay, which regions have multifamily properties, but don't have any type of charging. And so you're looking at, okay, so some areas have no plugs, but some areas have less than one, one to three, four to 10, 11, 15, greater than 15. And you can kind of get a better sense of who has access to this charging and how many people have access to this charging. Is it a equitable number? Is it the right amount? Is it not the right amount? And especially as EVs increase, it's important to look at how many plugs there are for each, each uh, multifamily property and perhaps even 
uh, the total population at large in the community. But this kind of gets at that. How do we disperse this out and make sure that everyone has access? Um, you can go to the next slide. After you finally analyze your data, you're at a chart and showcase and map your data. So this is just important in looking at how you can kind of change these results to better fit your community and cater that data, data to your audience. So you'll see in these examples that we used um, different types of charts and graphs to kind of get that point across that this multifamily property charging is very different across regions and varies quite a bit. So um, you can go to the next slide, Bailey. And so just beginning with that proximity analysis, this is one of the visualizations that we created for the city of Denton. You can see from top to bottom, it uses those same colors that were in that map, but instead of a map, it puts it onto council district numbers. So on top, on um, for the orange and yellow, you can see those that do have accessible charging versus um, you know who has EVs, who doesn't have EVs, and it's a very and it's a smaller number throughout the rest of the actual total number of multifamily properties. And then for the bottom two, the blue and the gray, you can see those that do not have access to accessible charging and who has EVs versus who doesn't. And of course, um, you can very visually see that those without access to charging are generally more than those that do have access to charging. And so it kind of creates this visualization that gives you a different, more broad perspective than something like a map does. And then you can move to the next slide. And so for this next one is actually looking at that availability analysis and seeing how it is different throughout the region for the city of Denton. So you can see on the left, you have those multifamily property units rather than the actual multifamily properties. So say in like district three, there's over 12,000, nearly 14,000 units. And you can see, okay, where are more units versus less units? But then on the right, you can see those plugs per 1,000 units metrics that we used. And the way we did that is since it's calculated for each multifamily property, you're able to see, okay, you're able to sum that for the entirety of the district and get a better sense of where plugs are actually spread out across the units. So for instance, in council district four, you can see that there's way more plugs compared to the number of units while in Council District 3, there's one more units compared to the number of plugs per 1,000 units. Um, and if you can move to the next slide, Bailey. And then this final visualization that we created, we tried to mix the two analyses to get a more cohesive view of how it is uh, conducted for the entirety of the analysis. So just looking at each Council District within this table view, you can see the number of multifamily properties that don't have access to nearby charging. So for overall, you can see those actual, actual metrics, and then you can look at, okay, what about versus an EJ area? How is that viewed for EJ versus non-EJ? So within those EJ areas, say, for instance, Council District 4 has 89% without access to charging, but if you're in an EJ area, you have no access to charging for that proximity version of the analysis. However, for the for the availability portion of this table, you can see in the public charging plugs per 1000 MFP units, you can see that that is varied across districts as well with council district four having the most number of charging plugs per 1000 units. And now on the bottom, we try to create a final cohesive approach looking at the city average rather than just across, across council districts. And then um, next slide. And then once you have this entire analysis done and you have it in your back pocket, you can start proposing actual actions for your jurisdiction. So to, to encourage action for this, for whatever jurisdiction you may have, you could potentially look for whatever city efforts you are currently using, or excuse me, your uh, existing efforts that you're currently doing. Perhaps looking at how you can identify and fill those charging gaps at a more granular level rather than that region wide, since the region wide is more of a look of how your region is doing rather than placing actual chargers down somewhere. You can begin to create more, more granular analyses to see where you should potentially place those um, charging stations so you can fill those gaps. As well, you can start considering um, multifamily ordinances. Um, looking at EV ready code. So say if a new building multifamily property is created, it actually um, 
has greater number or has um has code ready for electric vehicle charging. And then as well, you can partner for more available funding throughout different type of funding opportunities throughout. And then next slide. And then finally, just as a quick glimpse of what all can be done, you first start with gathering your data sources. So that way you can kind of see how it varies across your region, running the proximity and availability analysis and actually looking at where is accessibility greater versus lower? Finally, visualizing those results, whether it be through maps, charts, however, however it may be best uh, pursued throughout that uh, jurisdiction. And then of course, making, making it relevant to your just jurisdiction and then looking to the future and seeing how this can be improved over time. And then next slide. And then thank you. Thank you all for listening to me and dealing with the technical difficulties. I very much appreciate it. Thank you, Cave. And so now we wanted to take this moment to be able to hand it off to our wonderful cities that allowed us to be um, their experimenter. They, they were our guinea pigs for doing this analysis. And so we wanted them to discuss their perspective on it and kind of how they've run with the, with the results so far. So we're gonna go first with um, JT Douglas. Um, with the city of Denton. So JT. Hey, thanks Bailey. Um, so you can go ahead to the next slide and uh, I'll get started. Um, so this analysis uh, was awesome and uh, definitely got us at a really good time um, for some of the initiatives that the city of Denton has going on. Um, so Cave did a great job outlining you know what what the analysis is, and so I'm I'm hoping that Far and I can kind of um, showcase how this fits into the larger picture um, for some of the cities out there that are thinking about doing this and why it's uh, immensely beneficial. Um, so this is another one of the maps um, that I found kind of most useful, um, just a visual representation of uh, the multifamily complexes and areas where um, there's uh, different availability. Of, um, of the EV charging stations. Um, so, you know, what the city of Denton took away from this, um, the current state of EV nationwide and sort of how the city of Denton compares to that and what we can expect in the future. Um, along with that, um, we also have a, we are a municipal utility, so we have um, Denton Municipal Electric and we have public facing charging stations through DME as well. Um, and so this also really plays into some of the future planning for, um, for some of those charging stations as well. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the environmental justice and the equity piece um, and how the city of Denton is moving more towards uh, looking at that lens um, with not just this topic, but uh, across the board with our sustainability initiatives. So sort of having, having this outline and, and being able to duplicate that um, with some of our other efforts is gonna be great. Um, and really what this does is it gives us a baseline um, for EV charging, EV use, and, um, you know, how we can leverage that moving forward. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the, the figure that I pulled out of there for us is the 11% uh, within a half of mile, 11% of multifamily complexes within a half a mile of um, public charging stations. And so with our current adoption rate, you know, knowing that baseline moving forward will be be able to uh, track our progress with this initiative. So uh, go ahead to the next slide. Um, so we knew that EV charging was, you know, going to be a part of everything. Um, so our current, um, current uses that we have for that right now is the implementation of our 2020 Simply Sustainable Framework. So a lot of focus on air quality, um, a lot of focus internally on our EV fleet as well. Um, but really this, this kind of changes the game for us on a public facing and community perspective. Um, and so this analysis really shifts it from not just the at home charging, but to the uh, multifamily charging as well, which in Denton is of our population. And so that really, you know, expands the scope of what we can do with this program. The Western Fort Lauderdale Beach Resort to get you to the right agent who can assist you. Are so you, you can go ahead to the next slide. Uh, here we go. I think I figured it out. Thanks. Um, so 
this is really where um, this analysis is going to come into play for us over the next couple of months. Um, so in April of 2020, um, so just a few months ago, uh, the Denton City Council passed a science-based target for greenhouse gas reduction. Um, so that is 46.3% 40, uh, by 2030 from our 2018 baseline and net zero by 2050. And if you take a peek over there at our 2018 baseline, um, transportation is making up over half of our uh, current community inventory. And so, you know, if we go back to that, that map where we see, okay, there's, there's not a whole lot of um, multifamily complexes that are within that, that walking distance to a charger, you know, in a lot of ways, that's good news because that means that we've got the opportunity to take a decent chunk out of that um, transportation emission section of our inventory. Um, so this will be a piece of the puzzle. You know, we're going to work on public transportation, um, walking, biking, shifting the mode share. But, you know, EV is going to be a huge part of that. Um, and so uh, we also, along with that goal, um, are going to be starting up our climate action plan this summer. And so um, that's really where we're going to have a three-pronged focus. It's going to be you know, the mitigation for the greenhouse gases. It's going to be resilience. And then it's going to be that equity piece. And so what this analysis does for us is it puts, you know, this action item kind of front and center, groundwork done, and, you know, props to the to the COG for sort of laying out this approach so cleanly. And, um, you know, that's why it's probably going to be one of the first things that we tackle because we've got those metrics. So, um, you know, just can't say enough about it. And, you know, that's what we're going to use it for. So. Thank you, JT. And we have your um, contact information at the last slide, so I'm sure you'd be open to it, but I'm not volunteering. <laughs> you no, know. yeah, abs absolutely. Any any questions about how that's going to fit into what we're doing? Happy to happy to chat. Yeah, the, and the reason why we were able to um, use this and replicate it with two different cities is because we wanted to show scales of two different cities and how this can be applied and then use them as examples and peer exchange so other cities across the region can, can do this themselves and, and see the benefits before they're putting that work in. And so we really appreciate the partnerships between Denton and Dallas. But that being said, we're going to give Dallas their opportunity to also give their take on the um, project itself. And so um, here's JT's information, and we'll have that on the last slide as well. But um, Far Andrews, the city of Dallas, um, if you can give your couple slides, and then we'll have about um, a little less than 10 minutes for questions at the end. Okay, great. I'll, um, can you guys hear me? Okay, I don't see my visual, but maybe it'll pop up later. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so um, next slide. So the city of Dallas actually adopted its uh, climate action plan in 2020, and it really gives us a roadmap of how we want to move forward and address our environmental concerns at the city of Dallas. There are eight different goals in this plan, and goal three uh, is related to transportation. And this is where we housed our objectives, our targets at, for electric vehicles. So if you can see on this slide that one of our first objectives here is to shift surface transportation system and move people and goods more in more fuel efficient vehicles. And related to that, this target of getting 1500 outlets in Dallas um, and the work that the COG has done to help us advance this effort is, is amazing. It's, definitely put us in a position to launch programs a lot quicker towards this target. Next slide, please. So when we were developing the CCAP plan, equity was a huge component. And some of our preliminary data pools definitely reveal that we still had a lot of work to do in Dallas. Um, so with that information, we, we were able to um, engage with the COGS work, especially with the pieces that um, addressed environmental justice areas and really take a more granular look at how our EV infrastructure was distributed here in Dallas. Look at where some gaps and opportunities were um, and be able to do more targeted initiatives. I think 
this study really helped us build these initiatives so that we had a, a greater impact on our multifamily residents. Um, so it wasn't just like a buckshot approach. We knew areas that um, had gaps and voids. So we could target those areas. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this slide really illustrates some of the things that we were able to do. Oops. One thing we did was we were able to use those maps and to do a direct mail campaign. The city of Dallas uh, has a registration for multifamily uh -huh. units. And um, they have to register with the city code compliance department. So what we did was we, we looked at those maps, we saw where the gaps were, and we targeted those areas with a direct mail campaign. We worked with the COG to put together a postcard that talked about uh, the benefits of electric vehicle charging and that there were grant opportunities available. Um, so we did that mass mailing. We also collaborated with the Apartment Association of Greater Dallas um, and, and the COG to provide um, an educational webinar to all its members um, to get an article in their newsletter and an announcement on their website. So this was a very targeted effort at owners uh, of multifamily properties and managers of multifamily properties. Um, we also worked with our own City of Dallas Housing Department to try to encourage them to incorporate electric vehicle infrastructure um, in its new developments. Um, we engaged our Environment and Sustainability Committee Basically, we invited the COG to come and, and talk to this committee of seven council members, which is almost half our entire council, um, about these gaps and what this broke down, how this broke down by council district, um, so that we could highlight some of these gaps and get some um, political energy behind getting more charging stations in these areas. We also had an opportunity uh, to collaborate with the British Consulate. This is, uh, they, were, they were hosting a, a webinar about equitable distribution of charging stations. Um, and we were able to share some of our best practices here with our counterparts, our international counterparts. And that was, that was a, a very interesting experience as well. Um, oh, the trade show. So there was also the Apartment Association's annual trade show. It was their largest event of the year. There were thousands of multifamily property owners, managers, vendors um, coming through the events hall where we had a table um, and we worked with the COG to put together a flyer that um, discussed the benefits of electric vehicle charging. Um, talked a little bit about possible grant opportunities in the future. Um, there, were, there was some good conversation and, and a lot of interest in that area. Uh, next slide, please. So although we put a lot of energy into this, there, there's still a lot more we can do. So this slide really talks about, you know, how we can build on a lot of the work that, um, the analysis that the COG has provided and grow some of these initiatives so that we can see more electric vehicle charging stations at multifamily developments. Um, we we want to engage our environmental commission. So in addition to having a committee of council members, we now have an environmental commission which has 15 really uh, plugged in um, residents that are um, connected to their community that can, can help us and become advocates for this program. Um, and we wanna work through our council offices too, because we've noticed that certain council districts are experiencing huge gaps. Um, so working with our council members to um, communicate with multifamily developments and encourage more charging stations in, in that effort. Um, we want to also partner with our zero waste team in the future because they conduct trainings for um, multifamily owners and 
um, managers on recycling. So this would give us a captive audience to also talk about the benefits of uh, charging infrastructure as an immunity on their properties. Um, and continue to identify funding opportunities um, and let, let people know that these are available. Uh, we wanna highlight best practices. Now that we see infrastructure going in in Dallas, new infrastructure and multifamily developments, um, we, we need to talk about that. And we need to give other units um, a, a point of reference to call and ask questions and um, get, get more firsthand information. And we, we want to figure out how to work better with our Dallas Housing Authority. This is the organization responsible for um, maintaining low income housing. Um, and there's, there's a gap there uh, with infrastructure. So figuring out how we can um, help them with funding and design for uh, electric vehicle infrastructure in the future. So these are some of our just looking forward activities. Um, can't say enough, just like JT, about all the work that NTT COG and Clean Cities has put into this effort that really helped highlight um, where our gaps were and give us enough information to like really focus our efforts and, and make a difference. Uh, next slide, or I think that's the last slide actually. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, well, thank you, Far. Yes, and we appreciate you guys as well. Um, it's been, we didn't really have a plan when we started this. And so we were figuring it out as we went. And we were very happy with the results and we're even happier that we could replicate it and send out a guide to the rest of our region. And so we hope that um, it kind of gets some legs and starts expanding so we could see other jurisdictions and see this message and, and work kind of continue. But um, we will put a link. There's been a couple different um, questions about the PowerPoint and webinar in general. We will, we are recording this. We are going to post it on our DFW Clean Cities website along with our other past events. And so we do encourage everyone to go and look at our past recorded events as well on our YouTube channel. Um, but we will also concordantly on that website be posting the slide deck for anyone to access. And so um, in addition to that, we do have our Electric Vehicle North Texas website that has any and all resources that the COG works on in relation to EVs. Um, we try to post as many of our projects and resources as well as linking to really important resources and data um, that are helpful in navigating kind of the electrification um, growth trend. And so that includes all of our electric vehicle registration data tools and all of that as well as a dedicated page just for multifamily um, charging. And so that includes all the resources that we've been taking all this information from. It includes that replication guide that gives that step-by-step -step breakdown of the data, the link somewhere to get it, how to create the maps in a little bit more detail. And you can, that's just a normal PDF. You can download that and follow that along as well as um, reference the slides and everything like that. But um, there's also a case study as well that we wrote for the city of Dallas in relation to um, the, the study and some of the data that we found from that. And so if you're looking to distribute the benefits of that, that's a very easy way to kind of showcase and prove that um, you wanna do this type of type of work to get it done for your own jurisdiction. But um, we have about five minutes remaining. So we wanted to open this up for questions for not only the COG and Clean Cities, but also for FAR and JT. So you guys can start um, putting those in the chat. Um, I did receive one in the chat privately on funding. And so is there any funding available to begin to fill in gaps for multifamily residents? The answer is yes, um, because this study is focused on um, publicly available chargers, there is a lot more flexibility with types of funds available. Um, the current one that's available that's a pretty quick turnaround is the TERP, the Texas Emission Reduction Plan, AFFP, Alternative Fueling Facility Program. It's a mouthful, so just remember TERP, AFFP, just Google that or go to the Clean Cities. Um, we have funding associated um, on our website that links all the available funding as well as on nctcog.org slash AQ funding, it'll link you there. But that will cover up to 50% of costs for EV charging stations. 
um, up to $600,000. And so that closes on July 12th. So that does require a pretty quick turnaround of that um, for funding for um, individual um, entities to apply for. But um, for longer term funding through the infrastructure bill, the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure um, Program that was um, founded through the infrastructure bill, 5 billion of that was dedicated towards states to um, create statewide electric vehicle infrastructure plans. Mm -hmm. Textad um, just released our draft um, EV infrastructure plan for Texas. They've had it out for a few weeks now and are open for public comment. So we are um, encouraging ev all, everyone and all to submit public comments on that. That is basically um, directing how Texas will spend $408 million in EV charging stations um, over five year period. And so within the plan as it is right now, um, years two through five of that plan, MPOs, the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, which um, NCD COG is also the MPO for North Texas, will get kind of an allocated amount of money to recommend sites um, within their region. And so that'll be something that's really great. It's not a grant program, it will be TxDOT, putting in these sites and contracting with vendors. And so um, with that, they are still asking for, we will be working with our local jurisdictions more um, as this progresses and gets solidified. But there's a tool on the um, TxDOT website um, that it has the draft plan. I'll link that right here. Um, this has the draft plan that you guys can go through, um, information on how to submit those comments by June 22nd, so next week. And then they have a uh, mapping tool where they're um, asking for um, individual station locations to be basically placed on the map, it's interactive. And so if you say, hey, we think this would be a really great location, you put that on and then it's basically that data sharing and, and data gathering where we could see um, and have a list and kind of visibility of where and how people think certain stations um, will go. And so um, we do encourage everyone to put, if you have stations within your jurisdiction that you think will be beneficial as siting, put that in there. Um, visibility gets it on the map. But um, moving on to next question. Um, it was my understanding under AFFP that level two chargers weren't available for funding under government projects. Um, I don't believe that's the case. Um, AFFP is pretty open um, to both level two as well as um, DC fast chargers. Um, it does have uh, the limitation where public chargers, publicly accessible chargers are going to be prioritized over private chargers. So if um, government project is behind the fence for like a fleet or something like that, um, that will not have that prioritization, but it's still technically eligible. Um, any final questions as it's um, just hit two o'clock? All right, well, um, we appreciate everyone getting on today. We will um, send out a follow-up with um, some of the resources and links that we talked about today, but um, we are an open book here. We do ask you to reach out to us if you have questions on any of the steps of the analysis. We did this guide and replication guide for you guys. And so if it doesn't make sense, or you're confused at a step, reach out to the source. We'd be happy to walk you through that. But um, we appreciate you getting on today and hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks.